Hey crafters, this is Paulette. I have completed my March 2014 St. Patty's Day project. I thought I would just go through and kind of discuss a little bit the different dies that I used and how I start out with an idea and how it just evolves as I go through the project. I get a lot of my inspiration online um, and a lot of it is through the advertisements I receive from Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, maybe even dyes. I'm a dyeaholic, so I look at a lot of dyes from different companies. And as I'm looking at these things, I'm thinking about the next holiday that's coming up. Of course, all of these companies gear their advertisements towards the next holiday. So they have lots of very colorful graphics and things like that. So I had written down that I would do a three-petal clover or a four-petal clover. This drawing was so sad, I wrote a side note, point to point, laugh out loud at myself. And then I just started pulling dies to see what was going to work with this project. So I'm going to show you all the dies that I used for the base, for the base. Um, my little men were already made, and I'll, I will talk about those dies here in a little bit, too. I have this lovely AccuCut background heart die. This is a die that I ordered several years ago when my daughter got married, and I made a, a lovely little kind of wedding favor with it and printed some information on it. Uh, one thing to note, this die is not universal, so however you cut these things how they are cut face down is how you have to glue them together in that in that sandwich so these these are the fronts cut next to the die turn them over they can be glued this way essentially which is back to front you cannot glue back to back or front to front and I'll show you why if you match up the tops here this doesn't match up. If you match the point up, then this doesn't match up. I guess that may be because the die was hand drawn, the pattern for it was hand drawn, it wasn't computer generated, so it is not equal side to side. So just something to keep in mind if you have specialty paper or something that has um, text printed on it, you obviously will have to cut that face down and, and then glue those together. So I ended up painting the back of my project to cover up my pizza box. Um, originally my thought was that I would cut a bunch of these hearts, some, some face down, some face up, so I could sandwich them together and hide all of this pizza box inside. That way my front would just be this cardboard and my backs would just be the bare cardboard but it got kind of complicated when I went from a three petal design to a four petal design and then I got lost in all the die cutting and so it was just easier just to paint the backs. So that's what I did. I glued these um, backs to fronts and then I needed another shape and I always go to this because I know this fits inside the AccuCut heart. I did that for my banner last month for February. This is the frame lace heart die. But, you know, I didn't want to have to cut this out a whole bunch and glue it down a whole bunch. You have to get glue behind all of these little filigree pieces. So what I ended up doing was I made a stamp. So I cut this out of three layers of fun foam and glued those um, fronts to backs <laughs> so they were all facing the same direction and so that they were um, face up the way the foam cut on the die that piece is face up because you get a nicer where the die cuts into the product you get that nicer edge so I made sure that was face up this is just a scrap piece of wood from the shed and so I did start out trying to stamp this onto my green heart, and here is my scrap in my scrap drawer, and I just didn't like that. 
I did not have green paint. I had to mix blue and yellow together, and you can see some chunks of yellow there. My yellow is really old, and when that paint dries inside the bottle, and then you shake it up to use it, it picks up those little dried pieces and spits them out when you pour it out. But anyway, realized I was not going to be doing that, that I needed a lighter color, so I cut some hearts from this next die, which is the 3D pop-up card heart. It has a very nice heart on it as well, so that's where this came from. And I already knew that this heart would nest inside that heart very well. And so I ended up stamping that heart. So here is my little, my little palette. The best way to apply craft paint to a foam stamp is with a foam brush. And just pick it up here, tap it a little bit, then tap it onto the foam. Go around a couple of times. That will pop any bubbles because pouncing it on here creates some air bubbles. And you just want to go around and make sure you have good coverage. Then I took these light green hearts and made sure they were the fronts to the stamp. And just lined them all up as best I could and smushed this around a few times. And then pulled these off and laid them aside to dry. I needed something to glue my whole thing to. So I used this 3D teacup die from Sizzix and used the saucer. And glued my first two hearts here. Then added some little foam core supports under there. Then glued these two hearts on top of that. Added some more foam core supports in the points here. And elevated my man on some more foam core. And glued him here. I did, I already had these little men. They're from a project several years ago. And I just saved them. Uh, I keep all of this uh, old product packaging uh, stamps. You know, that little sleeve, that little plastic sleeve that your stamps come in. And I put all my die cuts in there. It just keeps it a little bit more organized for me. And then I didn't have to buy a place to store them. So, I think this turned out pretty well. This is a Studio G stamp. And I stamped that here with some black stays on, which really gave this an extra pop. This is a little cuddle bug die. And it already had these holes in it, so all I had to do was just dangle it from a little piece of wire. This shamrock is a quick cuts die. And the circle it's on is a Martha Stewart scallop one inch circle punch. Same thing, just dangled those. I did have to flatten that. I had one little curly cue on each end to, you know, hold them together. But I had to flatten the ones behind the hands. And I ended up taking another man... And gluing him behind, not a colored man, this is one that I made a boo-boo on while I was coloring. I started to color the hand. So I just glued that behind to give him some stability. I wish I had done that for these green hearts. They should have been a double thickness. Or cardboard even. But I wasn't thinking about that. And this ended up being an all-day project to make three of these units anyway. And so I just think they turned out really cute. I will attach just a little coloring tutorial. This was just with Big Mark. It's very simple. No real shading or anything. Just filling in the spaces. And I think it just it turned out really good. I like to craft for the holidays. And that's really how I purchase my dyes and things is... According to the seasons or the holidays, I try to pick things that are timeless. I try to pick things that will work with other things. Just like these two hearts, when I already had this heart and I bought this heart based on its size and that it would work with this, I've had it for several years. This is the first time I have ever used them together. And, but it won't be the last time. I love things that will do double duty as well. Just like this, turning a heart into a shamrock. So, as usual, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know. Uh, I also made my hanger with some little core board. This is a pop top off of a soda can. And just elevated that so a nail could go through there. Or we could run a length of wire or ribbon in there. 
I painted the back of my pizza boxes, which I was talking about a little bit earlier. Just with my extra paint, I always like to write on the back. I write the year I created the project, and I'll write, you know, to, who it's to. This one, it actually, I kept for myself, so I wrote a funny little thing for myself there. And that just, just makes it fun. Then people can look back and see when you created something for them. I'm so surprised when I pull out these decorations and things and look back, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I made this. I forgot about that. But that was pretty cool. So anyway, if you have any questions, give me a shout. So we're going to color this little man with some big markets. I'm not going to do any shading or anything fancy. I'm just using some basic colors. Medium brown, orange, black, dark green, medium green, and then this kind of light pale skin tone. I usually start with that first and just do the mouth. Let's do the black areas. We're going to do the little bow tie. Basic what, basically what I try to do is just outline each shape and then fill it in. The perforations are a little bit tricky. But once you get everything colored, it's going to look pretty good. Now, I didn't leave any highlights on my original tie, so I'm going to try to leave some highlights. This marker is so saturated that it's really tough. I'm going to paint this little space right here that is under the jacket. So to me, what would be in the shadow. And let's go ahead and do the shoes. I had a tickle on my nose. And if you just take your time, the ink will travel to the edge of the cardstock. Now I'm going to try to leave a highlight. The one the one on this shoe isn't very good. The one on this shoe, well, isn't very good either. So basically just coming around and just leave a space where I didn't put color is how I do that. If you have a white gel pen, you could come back and use that. But my Signal white gel pen only worked about halfway, halfway through. I was afraid to invest in another one. All right, let's go ahead and do the eye. I'm going to hold this 45 degrees from my man and just lay it down and pick it back up. Quick, quicker is better than not quick. <laughs> I'm going to do the shirt in this medium green. My original shirt was in the palest green, which is my favorite color in the big markets. And I use it up quicker than any other color. It and the, the tan, the palest brown. I just use those two for everything. And I just bought a new set of big markets so I could have that green. And I've already used it up doing March's name tags. Some places used to sell them individually, like Staples and Hobby Lobby, but I think they've both quit doing that now. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do the hat. The perforations on the hat really confused me, so I just kind of did my own thing regarding the hat. I'm really wanting some of the Copics, but they're a bit expensive. 
I'm thinking after looking at all the different sites and all the different prices, I'm thinking what I may do is just look at the colors of the big markets that I have and fill in the gaps. I really, uh, I'm really wanting the 25th anniversary set. I think it's a very nice range of colors. Now let's do the little jacket. I may come back and do a blog post on all the different places that I'm looking at the Copics. I watched some YouTube videos and some of the crafters shared their favorite source for buying Copics. And then I went to my own places, my own ideas. And what started all this was Joann's had a sale on some of their Copics, but as you may or may not know, Joann's has a markup on some of their things, so you really need to price check. Um, the interesting thing is, is that they will price match if you find what they're selling at a lesser price. So I was afraid to just go ahead and order, and I just don't know if I wanted to invest that much. Um, if I was going to order, I probably would have ended up getting the chows. They were something like $3.24 per marker. But after looking at all the different sites, uh, I'm really more interested in the sketch markers. For my hands and my comfort, and for the amount of ink that they hold, I think the sketch marker would be the way to go. I did find it very interesting though, um, on the actual Copic site itself, the sketch markers and the original markers um, were the same price, even though the original markers hold more ink. Um, and you can get the nibs, the brush tip nibs for the original markers, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead and draw. I'm going to draw the band on the hat with this dark green and just come along that perforation a couple of times to get a thicker band. And then we need to do the pants. And see, here's what I was talking about. I kind of bled over with the green on the perforation right there, but it'll be fine because the brown is going to go right on top of that. And I'll just go ahead and meet right up to the perforation with it. I think it's almost 70 degrees outside in Missouri today, and then tomorrow is supposed to be back down in the 30s. I'm ready for spring. The greenery for my tulips and my daffodils are up. Okay, the hair is this dark orange or bright orange. And we'll come back and put some brown on that. Let's do the buttons while that's drying. The buttons I did in black. And I just put one down in the center. And then I do two above and two below. Because an odd number is more pleasing to the eye than an even number. And then we'll add the brown to the hair. And I think we're done.
Now on my original men, I put a little bit of blush on the nose and the cheek and the little hands. And I probably did that with some chalk. I do have some chalks, but they're not right here where I'm at at my work counter. So we're going to end right here. If you have any questions, let me know.